This is unpleasantly dark. The room was too dark to see anything. Well... The lamp didn't have any oil in it. Duh! It didn't need to be oiled. <laughs> okay, what about just a single normal match? No. Okay, we need to get oil for the lantern, but where from? That is the next big question. He won't even check if this broken lamp has any oil left in it. Hmm. We made progress for two minutes and now we are stuck again. <laughs> Yeah, those weird frame rate dips cause that occasional interference like sound. Okay, what time is it now? 3 pm. Can we call? Now we can. And Mr. Geriatric is busy. What about Barbara? I don't wanna, yeah, bother her on Sunday. Is it still raining? Yes, it is. Still pouring. Now what? Okay, let's check the journal. As it turns out, there really was a door behind the exhibitor in the gallery. I probably subconsciously noticed the frame yesterday and then dreamt about it. I can't think of any other reasonable explanation. Mm, he sure likes to be living in denial. Sleep? Tired as I was, it was still too early to sleep. Oh, look at that! Finally! I was ready to do some work. Taking advantage of that was probably a good idea. Let's start writing. Suddenly... She stopped... Hesitant to give any credit to what her eyes were seeing. Hard to make out what it said. Can we read it? Oh, yes we can. Suddenly she stopped and stood there, paralyzed, hesitant to give any credit to what her eyes were seeing, and completely unaware of the potentially dangerous situation. Sup <coughs> Surprisingly, there wasn't anything unusual or strange about the event. Little Kathy was hastily crossing the living room towards the huge old oak door, her fancy black dress fluttering at every footstep. As the girl reached the doorknob, she turned to look back at Marion and urged her with a whisper to hurry up. But Marion wasn't seeing Kathy. Her memories haunted her back and displaced reality, giving room to the nightmarish vision she had spent months trying to forget ever since her first visit to the old house. In her dream, she saw the little girl also wearing a black dress emerging from a passageway hidden in the room. She'd never actually managed to glim glimpse where the passage was, only saw the girl running towards her, her small face contorted in a horrible grimace. Marion quickly realized it was a twisted version of the Kathy she would knew later, as if her figure was then distorted by a veil of smoke. Her exact movements through the room, reaching for the knob, facing her back, those were too many coincidences to ignore. It wasn't a nightmare that she experienced that day, nor a ghost, something she refused to believe in, but was now willing to blindly embrace as the truth given the shocking vividness of the vision. The ghost would come from the past, what she'd seen came from the... Her thoughts were interrupted as a figure behind her cast a shadow across the doorstep. You filthy liar, you have betrayed me, groaned a deep voice. Oh, spooky. Suddenly, he has more pages with text there. Cheat. 
Michael is a cheater. The discoveries I had made in the house were too exciting to stop now. I thought that maybe I could investigate further today and return to work, work tomorrow. What a lazy ass. We are still too early to sleep. Alrighty, shaving time. And let's see, will Michael now want to call Mr. Geriatric? All proud, I did some work. Yeah, two minutes. Let's see. Wow, he might answer. Yes. Jerry, it's me. You won't believe what I've found here. Try me. It's about the happenings that led to the murder you told me about. There's an impressive backstory surrounding this place and many loose ends. It would seem nobody ever stumbled upon this. Shouldn't you be working on your book? Are you listening to me? James Blackwood was into some very weird stuff and possibly dangerous. Something tells me this case is much more complex than it was thought to be. Why don't you inform the authorities? I'm sure they'll be dying to reopen a long forgotten case about some crazy old psycho killing his wife. <laughs> no way. And miss all the fun? I'm doing this on my own. Hmm, I wonder if those noises I heard have anything to do with this. Maybe James Blackwood was trying to hide something. Like in that book, where an old man was guarding the entrance to hell. <laughs> I bet this James Blackwood person had a doorway like that in his basement. Those dreadful noises must be the sound of the damned coming for you. Why, thanks, mate. That's been very helpful. Great to have friends like you. Then stop talking about all this nonsense. Do you have any idea how crazy it sounds? You're a writer, not some fancy PI. I'll get to the bottom of this. I know I will. I'm certain there's much more to James Blackwood than a simple act of murder. Now you're sounding more morbid than usual. Simple act of murder? Oh goody. Just somebody died. Nothing to worry about. This isn't like you, Michael. This whole thing is really affecting you. Stop being a drama queen. I'm a grown-up and I'm pretty aware of what I'm doing. Fine, go chase around the ghosts of James Blackwood. I'll stay here in the room. I'll let you know about my progress. Yeah, what else would you expect to get as a reaction when you start to babble about ghosts and whatnot? Uh, we are playing an insane person. How fun. Still not going out. What the heck does he want us to do now? I just wrote a few words for my new book, but I'm far from satisfied. It sounds too much like cheap writing. Really? <laughs> What's worse, I realized that all the time while I was working, I was in reality thinking about the Blackwood mystery. There's no point to it. I just can't do it. I can't write. At least not until I solve the mystery of Blackwood Manor. And now it's 5 p.m. Alrighty. Well, if he doesn't want to work, he doesn't want to sleep. He has no food for the second day, but he's not complaining about his hunger. That's positive, I guess. Kinda. <laughs> In a creepy way. But what should we do now? See what he says, probably. Yeah, investigate further today and work tomorrow. We need oil for the lamp from somewhere. But from where? Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Yep, that was me. <laughs> There wasn't anything in the nursery either. Hmm. Should we go back here and check that we didn't miss anything here? I'm pretty sure that we didn't. Hmm. 
Wait a second, by the way. Yeah, this is the gallery. So the room is... I have no idea. According to the blueprints, it would be here, <laughs> I guess. But what do I know? I know nothing, nothing whatsoever. sure we checked all the cans here. Very dirty can. Let's try to clean it. A quick cleaning revealed that it was a can of oil. <coughs> Kerosene. There appeared to be oil in that can. Do we have to use the lantern on it then? Good idea, but how was I going to get that oil from the can? I don't know. Open it and pour it. The lid was tightly stuck in place. The rust wasn't helping either. What should we use then? Boring tool. Do I have to use it here? I managed to pierce a hole in the can. There was now a small hole in the can. There can't be too much if a hole here does not cause it to spill out. Mm. Now then. I poured some oil inside the lamp by tilting the can slightly. There was very little of it, though. Well, if he only had to tilt it slightly, I would say the surface of the oil would have had to be somewhere around here, probably. Then, then of course, what is his defini definition of slightly? That is another question entirely. Let's leave Michael and his weird devices of thought and go to the gallery. To the secret room. Check the fucking music room. There is no music room, but there is an African room. Kind of. I'm just scared what will jump in our face when we light the lantern. The old-fashioned lamp made me think of exciting adventures. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have to use it, I guess. Uh oh. I'll admit, this is creepy. What the heck? Now that there was enough light, I extinguished the lamp to save the oil. An odd-looking African mask was positioned in the middle of the storeroom. Its presence made me feel terribly uneasy. The events of this day had left me unusually tired. I thought it was a good time to head to bed. Now he wants to head to bed when we found this room. Up yours, Michael. There's some papers there on the left. Let's see. Try to make sure there's nothing else here but that mask. I guess not. Yep, we are under stairs. I was getting very tired. Shut up, Michael. June 24th, 1962. Dear Christopher, please excuse the tone of this letter. I know I must sound like a raving madman, but I truly can't find a proper way to put together all the thoughts that have been taking my sleep away these past days. There is a reason behind all those recent adversities. It's the mask. Christopher, it's that mask I told you about. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't studied its origins on my own, but it's really the source of all my suffering. The tribe it belonged to, I... I must confess, I didn't take the mask by appropriate means. 
and I fear this might have unleashed some terrible wrath against my life and everything that surrounds me. It's been over a year since I witnessed the most outrageous acts of violence that not even in my worst nightmares could I have imagined, and the mask was the epicenter of it all. What I was thinking of when I took it is beyond me. It was probably a vicious streak of greed, but I can see clearly now. It represents evil, and I'm truly convinced this evil can somehow take shape and punish those who have disgraced it. I did, and now I must face the consequences. I will take some more time to investigate this. I might even go back to South Africa to seek help, although something tells me not even returning the mask would do any good. The damage is already done, and I believe it's getting worse as the day go days go by. Every time I walk past the gallery I can hear some incessant odd chatter, as if something was being plotted inside. And those voices, Christopher, they seem to be angry. Please help me, come and see me as soon as you can, James. That's what you get. Oh wait, this is different. Okay, let's see. July 3rd. My recent researches on the Dalmar have shed some light upon their terrible activities. I understand now that the lack of existing information about them was not only a cause of their small size and rarity, but also a reluctance, or rather superstitious, attitude towards their nature. Even some of the most important historians of South Africa will refuse to mention their name, usu usually referring to them as the War Tribe. After digging into some of the most obscure books I could find about the subject, I must admit now that treating them made me very nervous and uneasy, bringing back the memory of those horrible acts I witnessed on that day. I can't understand why any human being, uncivilized or not, would behave in such a manner. War among savage tribes is of course very common and a recurring theme in history, but the Dalmar they went even beyond war. Usually a tribe will engage in battle to conquer new territory or perhaps defeat an enemy. They did it for the sole reason of destruction and extreme love for violence. The account of their actions is downright scary. They'd invade villages slaughtering every inhabitant without regard for their sex or age. Men, women, children would inevitably perish by their fury and hate which is, I think, the most unsettling element of their stories. They didn't use any weapons. They killed villagers with their bare hands and teeth as if they were drawing power from an unearthly source. I find it hard to believe this, and if I hadn't seen them with my own eyes, I'd say they were some kind of wild legend. Once they'd slaughtered every living thing in the village, they'd burn it to the ground, every single construction or possession of the fallen villagers, proof that they definitely were not interested in conquering or even taking some advantage of the terrain. Their motives were moved solely and purely by an in incredible despisal of life and hatred towards anything that wasn't from their village. That is another curious thing. They somehow managed, managed to sustain a constant population level as if they controlled exactly the amount of people needed for an attack but at the same time warrant survival using their few existing resources. I fear this wasn't some kind of wondrous organization system, but rather an elimination process of a useless member or an unnecessary child. I dare not think about it, but I'm afraid this would explain why they didn't need to hunt for food. They feasted upon themselves. Now I know what the mask I took stands for and I shiver at the thought of it. I must confess I'm worried. I don't know why, but I fear for my life. Interesting. Very interesting information about the tribe. That is what you get when you rob things from crazy people. You start getting paranoid and hearing stuff. I have a feeling this night will be worse than the previous. <laughs> Did I just hear drums? I hope not. 
I was getting very tired. You are getting sleepy. Your eyelids are growing heavy. Okay, before we hit the sack, I think we will shave. Mm, let's save here. And there is one thing I'm going to try now to, before we continue, to alleviate this noise problem, which seems to have gotten worse now for whatever reason. So we shall return shortly to sleep. Yes, yes, Michael, you will get sleep. Okay, here we are again. I did find the switch for turning off V-Sync, so let's hope that helped. And now, I lay down on the bed. Let's see what the night brings. Something didn't feel right. Are we dreaming or awake? Not until I investigated a little further. Even if I wanted to do some work, it was too dark. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was she hearing noises again? I couldn't hear anything out of the ordinary. So that is not the issue here. He just doesn't feel quite right in the head, so he must go investigate. <laughs> oh, Michael. Such a basket case. Now we can go wherever we want. Oh my god, I don't like this. Apparently there was a door in that part of the hallway. Let's listen to the nursery. I couldn't hear anything out of the ordinary. Is it the gallery? <laughs> Nothing weird yet. Question is, is there light here now at all? <laughs> Good bumps. The mask is gone. Oh great. 